Alright, howdy duty fuckers. How's everybody doing today? I uh, was on my way out to the King of the Hammers and didn't even make it to the dirt and uh, had an axle bearing. The seal crapped out on me. I think it knew what the business was coming. Fortunately, I wasn't able to get out there and uh, show everybody a good time and have a few panties drop. So, uh, wasn't able to take the Xterra out. But today, I'm going to try to be a YouTuber for about an hour, do the best that I can to record this. Uh, see how many millions I can make so that we can retire like my boy DeGroot X Racing. Um, so I'm going to replace this bearing seal and, and do the best job that I can do showing it. I've seen a few videos on YouTube and I just don't think um, they captured everything. So I'll, I'll do the best that I can. I'm, I'm running off of my phone here um, with all projects. Um, Never start without any liquid courage. Uh, it's seven o'clock in the morning, you know, it's on, on a God Sunday, so don't judge me. My wife judges me enough, so got the spacer, the seal, the clip. Uh, in the freezer here, I got the bearing. I've never frozen it before. I've done this project many times before. Not exactly saying that I've always done it right. There's something wrong, and I'll show you what I think is wrong. But uh, I'll give it a chance here and take it from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is lift up the one side. I'm not going to empty out all the grease, or I'm sorry, the oil that's in my pumpkin there. Uh, I'm just going to tilt it up on the one side. Hopefully all the oil stays in. And uh, once I do that, I'll show you uh, what a bad bearing looks like when it wants to crap out. Hey, I'm back. This might be an indicator that something done gone and fucked up. That's not supposed to do that. All right, so with all the gear oil coming out of my axe, I went ahead and pre-squirted uh, pre everything so that way nothing's seized. I mean, my brake pads, those were squealing. I figured that was a great way to, to get all that noise out of there. So obviously uh, caliper is gonna come off, rotors are gonna come off. It's a 19 millimeter in the back, take off the caliper housing bracket, and then a 15 to take off the caliper. So I'll go ahead and get that done, take the rotor off, show you the internals. All right, just wanted to show everybody that, you know, you should come underneath your vehicle at least yearly and uh, grease and make sure everything's good. So really with this bearing going out, I mean, one third of the vehicle really just, the paint is now protected. There's Definitely nothing that's going to stick on there and inside of here, I mean, really, I just, I really did a good job. I didn't, didn't even know what I was doing. And then your brakes, you should always pre-soak your brakes. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I got quite a job that I got to do to clean up here. Uh, gear oil on the rotors, it just helps to keep them polished. Uh, really just protect all the, the metals so that way it doesn't rust. Uh, we've got a big issue with that down here in California or New York. <laughs> they ain't got nothing on me. But, uh, yeah, back to the axle here. I mean, I would say that that's probably fine. You know, the backlash on the clutch in there. Uh, I think I think I really set it good last time. So, I'll go ahead and get all this ripped apart. So, on the back side here, you can see four of these. Where's my finger pointing? Oh, there it is. There's going to be four of these nuts you got to take off. And then uh, you take another sip of liquid courage, put your purse down, and just yank on this son of a bitch. She'll come right out if you did it right. Okay, like I said, uh, liquid courage. Let's give her the old one, two. One, two! Come on in, let's see, uh, let's see how bad it is. How fucked up it's fucked up. I mean a little bit of metal shavings all over. Let me pull this long shaft out. I am kind of jealous though it is quite longer than me, but you know, keeps her happy. Oh yeah, we uh we did her some good in there. Whew. I'm definitely gonna have to sand that out a little bit. Alright. On to the next step. So uh, the previous bearing that I set, this is a Timken 10. And uh, what I'm about to show you, really just, 
really don't like to see this, but these are supposed to be fucking good bearings. Real good bearings, but they're not. What the hell? Where did all that come from? Oh my god. Alright, so majority of the time, 100% of the time, work 60% of the time, the race is going to stay in there. You're going to want to get that out. Now, I'm just a garage guy, you know, full-time YouTuber. I've been doing it for a couple years now. Uh, I'm broke as fuck, you know. I'm not saying this is the right tool, but this is what I use. You you just throw her in there and you just work this some bitch around. Eventually that race will come out. And uh, then you take everything to the bench. Alright, so we got everything to the bench. And uh, told my wife, you know, I was trying to take this shit professional, be a full-time YouTuber. She decides to do laundry today, so ex excuse all the noise that's going on here. Thank you, ma'am. So now that you got everything over here on the bench, what you're going to want to do is take your fine little claw tools here, stick them in the, uh, the old clip there, give her a little squeezer, get her nice and right, slide that off. And then my method of getting the spacer off is, uh, this is a 3 8 drill bit. And uh, it'll put a hole in there just good enough to, uh, and you want to do it on both sides, you know. Uh, diagonal from each other on the other side left of it not the right of it because the right is left and that's wrong so put two drill holes in there and then uh, you're gonna want to get your punch which I should have had that already ready oh yeah get your punch in there in that hole that you made and then you're gonna want to take the smallest hammer that you have which is usually this guy and just the Mayweather 1-2 and uh, she'll pop right off, I'll tell you that. After that happens, take your old trusty grinder without the guard, OSHA approved. And uh, as long as this some bitch don't fly apart and hit you in the mouth and the kisser, uh, you're going to want to cut off all this cage and stuff. Uh, you can see I've done this before. I've kind of nicked the, uh, the cage there, whatever that thing is called. And then just break all this apart, slide everything right off, and... Um, I'll show you how to put on all the new stuff. Forgot to mention, part of my things I like to do is use all my wife's uh, kitchen towels and whatnot uh, to pick up any sort of debris and all that grease and whatnot. And for the safety part of things, what you're going to want to make sure you do is you put on your safety glasses. And we all know what those are. Those are them. Alright, as you can see, I went ahead and made my my drills there, my holes, and then I took my uh, grinder there and went ahead and put one in there so that way I can give her the Mayweather one too. My problem is I've never seen this before. That's supposed to be tight though. Oh my god. Alright, so I figured it out a little bit. When I went ahead and took the grinder to her and cut through, it went ahead and popped open for me, which is amazing because sometimes you can sit here and beat on these things for a minute but essentially that's what you want to happen is this thing just split so that way you can slide her right on off all right the next step of this go ahead and get your grinder and if you have a, a smaller uh, wheel that'll work best and the reason for that is you want to come in here and uh, grind all this off you know as close as you can down and then you know I, I kind of nicked this before so it has structural integrity but uh, you definitely don't want to cut through that I have this part coming, but it's going to show up next weekend. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to wait for that. I have to get my vehicle back up and running. Um, she is my daily driver and pantyhose dropper, so got to get her back on the road. All right, then. So once you get the outer cage out and your clutch bearings fall out, uh, here's the hard part, and here's where you're going to want that small cutting wheel. You got to get extremely tight and cut across here on both sides again. Uh, try not to nick that like I've done there, but uh, once you do it both on both sides, then you want to take your little tiniest hammer that you have and and uh, hit her good, and she'll she'll snap off. All right, you got all the business off, cleaned her all up, got the old trusty axle uh, looking good here. Put in a few score marks, but I'm not really worried about that. She's never let me down yet. So all of this is. Uh, 
really for nothing. I'm just waiting for the national back order of axle shafts to come back in stock. You can find passenger sides all day, not a problem. But uh, drivers, non-existent. They just don't exist anymore. So I know what I have. A million bucks to the highest bidder. All right. So key thing here is make sure you put everything back on the way it goes. Make sure you turn this dilly hooper on the right way. Don't forget to install it like I've done once before. After a little bit of liquid of courage was maybe involved too much that day. And then you bring your axle uh, to press everything on to your trusty Harbor Freight Chinese crap. Um, nothing wrong with them. I trust my life with them. I would even put my unborn child underneath those things. So get all this set up and I'll let you know how it goes. Alrighty, alrighty, alright, alright. Got that dually hipper on, I think, just right the right way. Make sure you put that on. I mean, can't do that wrong, can't do that wrong. Let's not do that. And then, uh, what we're gonna want to do is come over to the fridge, of course. Grab maybe one of these. I mean, four or five of these by eight o'clock, and I've only been an hour in. We're doing alright. Grab this thing out. Now, I've never done it frozen before, so we're going to see what the world of difference is. You always want to make sure before you apply anything, you spin on the shaft. Well, that's what she should do, not what I'm going to do. There's no judgment if you decide to, but here's the next step. All right, went ahead and grabbed my grease gun because I didn't want to spit on anything, get the wrong impression to anybody. Most important thing, another thing that I've done wrong before, I like to do things wrongs. I do it nice because I do it twice. Make sure you put your bearing on right. You can do it wrong. Don't do that. Always remember, it should slide on in this fashion. See the slit down there at the bottom? All that goes like that. Imperative. Things can go south really quick, and you'll be doing this all over again. All right, here's the press setup. I'm gonna start pressing her down. Um, I'm gonna have to reset it a few times. My trusty old Harbor Freight shaft there is a little bent, so I have to get her started. It'll bind up a little bit, and then I gotta reset it, and then just keep pressing her. I'll uh, show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. All right, and there she is. After a few cuss words and uh, a couple praise to Jesus, she's back on. That is everything. No point was I serious during any of this, obviously, with my humor and everything going on. Uh, this is just my experience of doing things. I, I'm not a machinist. I don't know specs. Um, when I throw all this back together, it's with my half-inch impact with a couple Uga Dugas. I know that's probably enough right there. So she's nice and tight. Hopefully, this will get me out to uh, TDS here in Ocotillo, California next month. And uh, so that way we can send her. All right, guys, appreciate everybody uh, watching. From here on out, it's just slamming the axle back in, bolting everything back up. I think all the metal shavings that I was seeing at the end of the axle shaft there, I think it was from the bearings. Last weekend, I pulled the cover, drained all the gear oil, uh, thoroughly looked through everything, the ring and pinion teeth. There was no abnormal wear. I mean, they looked brand new, so I'm just really hoping for whatever reason the Tim Ken 10... Um, the metals were just a little different than last time. The only thing I could think is uh, I used to run wheel spacers because I am Titan Swap. So I ran one inch in the rear just to kind of bring out, you know, a little bit uh, to make a little, a little bit better. But maybe that's finally catching up to me. I, I've been running spacers since 2014. I've never had an issue. Never had to replace wheel bearings. Uh, nothing like that. So this is this is it. I mean, hopefully this worked. Hopefully the new axle shafts come in here shortly uh, so I can just replace this. I've had the same issue on the passenger side. I'm kind of leaning. It might be something that I'm doing wrong, but you can't press it on not enough. I mean, it will bottom out. And uh, so I know that I'm doing that right. Uh, but since I've replaced the passenger side with uh, the Z1 off-road half shafts, I I've never had an issue with it. So... It's got to be something I'm doing wrong, but hopefully you guys had a few laughs during all this. Uh, while you're watching this, hopefully it gives some insight on the steps to do everything. Um, and that's about it. We'll see you on the next one. All right. This is how everything should look. Nice.